on the mic. On the mic with your host, Suleiman Azahafi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of On the Mic with your host, Suleiman Al Zahafi. Today, we have a very interesting topic. I'm sure there's a topic no one really expected here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but with Vision 2030, amazing changes, new changes, exciting changes, and unexpected changes. Well, what, what is that you may be thinking? Well, I, words cannot describe it, so I brought specialists, individuals who are good at what they do. And uh, yeah, I would say they love the heat, they love the cold, they like the chill ice cold. Well, what does that mean? We have individuals, the Saudi team for the Saudi Kingdom Curling Association. They are for the Saudi Winter Sports Federation, which is very exciting and interesting, especially what's happening here in the sports uh, sector in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So without further ado, for here on the mic with your host, Suleiman al we we would like to welcome them to the show in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the capital city of Riyadh. First, we'd like to welcome Alistair Fife, uh, joining us via phone call. Salam alaikum, Mr. Alistair. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, you're very welcome. Pleasure to be with you. It's an absolute pleasure. And here we have in the studio, Mr. Mohammed al daran Thank you so much for joining us. You are welcome. And of course, Zain Hagawi. Uh, very, it was an absolute honor to have all of you guys join us here. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we'll start with Mr. Alistair, or shall I say with the president first, if you guys don't mind. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Zain, uh, you are the guy in charge of the team, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I am. So pretty much give us an introduction. What is this team about? What do you guys do? And uh, yeah, give us, the, uh, the gi- give us all the good details. Okay, curling. Yeah, what, what is, is curling? It? Uh, basically, let's say it's uh, chess on ice. Say or that again? Chess on ice. Do you have to bring the chess pieces or? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or you can have it, it's board, uh, you can just uh, b- define it as uh, bowling on ice. It's pretty much that. It's a cross, t- uh, it's a sport, uh, a blade on ice. It's a sport, blade on ice with two teams. Uh, both they ta- take turns to slide stones of granite towards a target which we call it the house. So you so you uh, you follow me so far. So far, so good. Okay. The sport it's an Olympic sport and para Olympic sport. Uh, everyone can play it from each and every age, and it's a winter sport. Okay. For uh, the disciplines in it, there is the discipline for women, men, and mixed doubles. Wow. Sounds uh, easy, but I guess it's not, huh? Yeah, no, no, no. It's that, you know, you need uh, to have sort of agility to, to, to play this game. So you have to be very quick on the ice, or you have to be smart on the ice? Which one is it? Both. Really? Yes. So you can't pick one? You cannot work well on this one. Okay. And you have to be flexible as I'm well. I'm flexible as well. Okay. I see videos of curling and everything, but like it looks easy. What do you have to say to that? I'm sure everyone's saying the same thing. What do you guys say? Why are you smiling in the studio? You can tell me the truth. Uh, it looks easy, but you need a lot of hard work actually to, to reach that. You there. need focus, uh, smartness, uh, technique, not to strength as some people will assume. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, people would assume that you need sort of uh, the strength, but you read the strategy. That's definitely the game because you're playing basically chess on ice. Okay. So you need that. So for you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Alistair, uh, introduce yourself and tell us where you're from, what do you do, and how did you come up to become a, t- a member of this team? Like, it's very interesting. You know, you're, you're not Saudi, but you're part of the Saudi team. Yeah, that, that's true. So... <coughs> Um, I my origin is from the UK, from Scotland. 
from Scotland, and okay. That, that's the country where curling was really developed as a sport, um, and it's got history of 500 plus years as a sport. And as Zane has explained, it is a game of skill, strategy, strength and finesse, pushing stones along an ice towards the target and teams playing against each other. So I grew up in Scotland and I played curling as a young guy. And then many years later, um, I moved out to Saudi in 2016 to work in the railways sector here. And I'm a railways engineer. And the um, when I got here, um, nobody had ever heard of curling. It didn't. It didn't exist in the kingdom. Um, so um, I teamed up with um, some guys, including Zane, as he was one of our very, very first members. And together we got the sport started in in Riyadh. So we we, we started it from nothing. And we brought the equipment into the country. Um, we, we, it's not available uh, in, in the country, so we had to import it. And um, we've just started very small, and we've grown slightly over the years to the point where we now have a, a small but enthusiastic um, number of guys who play curling regularly. And from that, um, we've got a team developed which is now playing at international level, wow. representing representing the kingdom. And how many members are so far in the team? Well, in, in the team, you have four four players. So like, like a football team has 11, yeah. at Curling, you have four, four players in the team. Um, so we were just back from a competition in Canada in, in November there. <clears throat> and we had five guys away with us. And um, the four four guys played on the ice at one time, as 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 a team, and so that's that's who we took. Wow! So it's very you know for for you have to admit you know here in Saudi Arabia of course we have a lot of changes vision twenty thirty and everything, but a lot of people have not heard about curling. You know people do not understand what curling is. How will you in your own words describe it? Like how will you describe it for someone that will just say it's like curling is just something like. Uh, I won't say figure skating on ice. It's just like, you know, throwing a rock in there. Because, you know, everything in life looks easy from outside. But once you start doing it, you're like, oh, my God, how much focus you need. You know, you get a headache just focusing on the speed, on everything. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a game where you are, it's predominantly a skill. But to achieve the skill, you need a lot of strength, stamina, balance, and um strategy as well and Zane described it very well when he said chess on ice that's the strategy part of it so if you can imagine a sheet of ice which is 50 meters long yeah. and at each end you have um, a target painted it's underneath the ice so the ice surface is continuous but through the ice you can see painted rings underneath the ice and in the center of the ring is the center of the target so think of archery and you're aiming for a round target with a, a, an absolute center, the bullseye point. So you've got one of that under the ice at one end of the, the sheet of ice and you've got one 45 meters away at the end of this 50 meter sheet of ice. And your aim is to push a stone, slide it along the ice all that distance until it reaches the far end and you try and get it as close to the center of the target at the far end. And you play against another team, and if you put a stone in there, they will try and knock it out and replace it with their stone, and so on. You go through until you, you run out of stones. But to help the stones going, it's not just to like archery. When you're on your own, you just fire an arrow and, and it goes. When you're curling, you've got guys who work with the stone, so they can't touch the stone as it's traveling along the ice. But what they can do is they use brushes to sweep the ice in front of the stone, which helps the stone travel. And the sweeping, if you put a lot of effort into it, that helps the stone travel a bit further, and it helps travel the direction of the stone. And the reason that the game is called curling is because when you let the stone go, you have to turn it either clockwise or counterclockwise to put a spin on it so that it travels. And as a stone travels along the ice, it gradually turns left. 
if you've got the spin in one way or it'll turn right as you've got the spin on the other way. And if you're sweeping there, you can affect the amount of spin and the amount of deviation that travels left or right as it heads towards the target. So you've got a whole lot of factors involved in there. So you've got four people in a team. You've got the guy who's delivering the stone, pushing it along the ice. You've got two guys sweeping or ready to sweep in front of the stone as the stone's traveling. And then you've got the guy at the other end who's called the skip. And his job is to determine the strategy, tell the guys where he wants the stones to be played, whether he wants the stone to go and just finish at the the location at the centre of the house or thereabouts, or if he wants them to play a stone which is faster to knock out one of the opposition stones or it maybe more like of the opposition stones. A lot of stones. focus goes into it, you know, just uh, trying to understand it and keep up with it. There's like a l too much focus in it. Like, like how did the uh, concept ever was ever started uh, around the world? Like you mentioned in Scotland, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it goes back. The, the, the written history of the sport is over 500 years. And it used to be played outdoors on frozen lakes in the countryside. In Scotland in the winter is a cold country and the water um, sometimes freezes over on, on lakes and ponds. And it became a natural outdoor game. People would just get large stones and they would push them along the ice and they would use rough stones which were not fashioned in any way. And as the game developed, people worked out that if you... Um, if you if you started working with the stones and carving them in a circular manner and getting a good shape on them, you could get a, a lot more control and a lot more fun out of the game. And the game's developed from that over the years. Wow! So it's like uh, it's amazing for you. It's like uh, you was begin first beginning person to start it, and the, the team started growing and everything. Uh, and you know, it's like in, with Vision Twenty Thirty, the sport uh, arena is becoming more developed and everything. Uh, where do you guys practice? Because I was surprised by it. There's no ice rink here. This is what I understood. So where do you practice at? Uh, and what do you guys do to practice? We practice at the Royal Mall. Okay. That's for what you call it, club curling. When and which is uh, once every two weeks, um, every Saturday, for about a couple of hours. That's what is club curling. It's not. It's for fun. Hmm. Yes. But when we w we are going to go for an international uh, representation for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as a team, we normally go for a camp in Bragg. A, a what? A camp. A curling camp dedicated just for the sport. And we do that for about a week. It can be extended to two weeks. And just that right before going internationally to play friendly games or international competitions. Okay, so uh, what do you guys do in general for practice? Like, what is a typical day for practice? What's the process? Do you guys technique or communication or drills or what? Because usually every sport you understand, like, how they practice. What do you guys do? What's the practice uh, routine? The practice is general. Uh, it can be how you slide as a player, how you slide. How you balance first of how all. How you balance as well. On the uh, ice. The strategies then, the techniques, how you win and end. Uh, example, to learn how to take out the stones from the other end. So you have to think like ice. You have to be soft on the ice. Yes. yes. You have to speak yes. to the ice. Yes. You have to know your speed on the you ice. You need the speed of ice. The ice is super fast. It's fast ice. So you have to be skinny, big. Uh, Not doesn't matter. really. It doesn't matter really. You Actually, have to know the ice speed itself. What? The ice speed while you exercise you know, or playing um, with the ice. Like by time, you know... How is this, uh, the ice speed? So you, when you go to arena, so you to arena, you have to kind of practice it and understand. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, every time we we, tr uh, we have uh, a game, especially when it's uh, uh, let's say uh, on an on an ice that is uh, built for curling, not an uh, you know skating ice which we have here in Riyadh. You need to practice before for about uh, ten minutes for each team to know the speed of the ice. Uh, how 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 fast that uh, stone can travel 
on that ice? Is it fast? Is it slow? And is it tough to throw the stone on, on that ice? Is it, is it, if you just push it slowly or with a little bit of a strength, would how, how far would it uh, travel? So let me get this straight. There's uh, four, four players yes. playing on the ice yes. at a time for each team. One of them pushes the, uh, the stone. Yes. W w is made out of what again? Granite. Granite. And the three remaining ones, what's their jobs? The, the three, okay. One is called the skip, which is the captain of the team. Okay. And what does the skip do? Just supervise? Uh, uh, the advise? skip is the one who tells all the other players, all the other players, how and where to throw the stone. Exactly. Does he put like his ears to the ice or what? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. He's more, if, if you see at the end of, he will tell you the direction. Oh, because he's going to be following the... Uh, the no, uh, he will be at the other end. Okay. As Alistair told you now, the, the length of the sheet of ice... 50 meters. 50 meters. So, the, with 50 so meters, one guy throwing it... In 50 meters, you rarely go on to understand what is the other... Uh, so w the other side, and we're focused spoken. on the. Uh, no, it's, you it's will. It's hard to see the other side there. No, so yeah. you can not, not to hear him. Go. So you you will need to. We will have a sign language, basically. Okay. That's one part. Uh, and one of the teams that are really good. This is a side note. One one side note in this. One of the good teams on this actually, the Bara Olympics, uh, who you know. Um, with sign language they are really good in this really yes because they don't focus on the noise around them like us when we are playing you have you see you 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 listen to the other especially when it's international game you would uh, a lot of distractions a lot of distractions intentional distractions or just support? no no it's uh, other teams playing and you hear some shouting as well uh, and one part of the game itself, you will always hear someone is uh, shouting, uh, hurry hard, hurry hard, or, uh, or the, our colleagues in, uh, uh, in Qatar, they, uh, they would shout, agua, agua, which is more, with more power, with more power, which is so loud, it might distract you. Is that their technique to do it? Probably. Could sneaky, be. sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much, there's one that's pushing the ice or throw the ice. Okay. Yes. There's two of them scratching the ground. Yes. And there's one at the end waiting to guide them. He's guiding them from the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning, telling them where to throw the stone uh, to, to reach the house. So if someone messes up, who, who do we blame? The guy throwing it, the guy uh, or the... That's or one thing. I it's feel like it's the guy throwing no, it. You know? No, actually, it's actually a team. Got, it's, it's a, a team. team. It's a team. We don't blame anyone. Each one of the guys, he got to play like two stones. Yeah. So... Like oh, they get to throw two stones each guy. Yeah, each yes. guy. It's, it's eight stones and four players. So, so each one gets a, gets a chance. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. No pressure, I feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, I, I get an idea. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, for you, uh, for you, Alistair, uh, listening to what they're saying and this and that, do you have anything to add? Um, no, they've, they've described it pretty well. Um, it's... It's a team game and it's it's good fun because you're working together um, to um, play against another team. And with the four players in the team, you're playing against four players on another team. And um, after you play all the stones at one end, then you count up the scores on the stones which are nearest the centre of the target, score points. And then you play all the stones back along the ice in the opposite direction for the next end. So a typical game will last for 10 ends or so, or maybe two hours. And um, over that time, it's, um, it's a good workout. There's a lot of cardiovascular activity because you're sweeping hard and the, um, you're working well as a team and it's very enjoyable. It's, it's good social sport. And the other good thing about it is afterwards, um, we generally sit down and go and have a cup of tea or coffee or a meal or something together with the opposition. Uh, so it's a friendly game and um, sociable. So that's and how you share the secrets. One of, one, and one of the good things about it is they have this, this code of etiquette called the spirit of curling, which means that it's not a rough game. It's a game where you respect the opposition. You don't do anything to 
maliciously put them off or cause any fouls or anything like that. There's a game of respect and a game of integrity. If you can think like golf has got rules of etiquette, curling's mm. got the same sort of rules of etiquette in it as well. So it's a very respectable sport, but a good, uh, fun sport where you get a lot of workout, a lot of energy, and a lot of thinking, a lot of strategy. It's got something for everybody in it. It's, it's, it's a good, fun game. Okay, it sounds very interesting. Uh, so yeah, uh, for you guys, like uh, he was saying about code of ethics and uh, yes. and about respecting, and you know, you sit Sports down with the opposition. Uh, for you, I know, like uh, Alice, uh, how uh, Alistair uh, was the beginning p- part of it. We have uh, Zayn. He was the, the, I believe, you're the president of that, or the president or one of the founders of the curling association. And for you, uh, Mohammed, how did you get into the the curling? Like, I want to understand, like, uh, w- w- which phase of your life was it? Is it because you wanted an interest sport, a hobby, you met them uh, just walking around the mall, or what? First of all, I like ice. You like ice? Exactly. So when you have a drink, you usually extra ice? Yeah. Okay. Pretty important. Good indicator. I think that's one of the interviewing qu- uh, questions you guys had, right? Extra ice, no ice, or? Ice, maybe. ice, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, so actually, yeah. we, we we got we have a lot of fun when we playing, and it's a cold place, and I like cold. So uh, when we start, or when I start with the team, it's like for fun, and then I join the team, like officially for uh, playing on Saudi national team. I went with them for the uh, the sport camping in Prague uh, for training there, and I learned a lot because the ice rink there it's way way different than what we have here really yeah that one it's way different it's a uh, it's a specific only for killing what we have here is only for like skating sliding, yeah skating you know it's also it's for kids which is a so smaller is it, is it, is it's not it, is organized. it what exactly the quality of the ice the temperature or everything the, the temperature and the quality of the ice and the the smoothing of the ice everything there's a lot of things that you play in uh, in killing that you cannot do it on on this ice rink so you we went to the creme de la creme in prague yes yeah. yes and there's oh, no, we had the tr- uh, the, uh, we had a coach there and the coach was actually an olympic uh, medalist really yes uh, you guys saw you got to see the uh, gold medal and everything we one of our uh, th- this is interesting and and that was one of the training we had we had a friendly game with the czech republic olympic team how'd that go Believe it or not, we really did a good good in, in front of them, and it was not only the four players from the men team. It was the other, the other, the other four players from the women team. So each and every end, and there was only three of us. Uh, they would change the entire team to challenge us each and every end to. Play, and they kept doing this uh, several times. And actually, we we did good. We uh-huh. did really good, and we did it twice. We did it once with the um, the Olympic team, and one well, the other team. It was with the Para Olympic team. So, and we did good. Wow. Yeah. So uh, going to Prague, obviously, like uh, Zayn was saying, it's like it was very fruitful, very important, and very. He was saying you guys played against the uh, former champions. So how was it like? Uh, is it something that you guys felt was very crucial and benefited you? Because I believe you guys went to Canada, you competed internationally, and you got number six, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And the first time you guys ever did uh, won uh, recognition like that internationally. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that. The, the Prague was very fruitful or anything. What's your what's the comment you have? Well, we we trained there with um, as uh, Zane said previously with the Olympic trainer and. Uh, uh, we learned a lot. While we are training, we played with the Olympic team of Czech Republic. And that uh, game, it was uh, really uh, uh, helpful for us. Okay. So, uh, um, when we went to Canada for the uh, real match, you know, for for uh, the uh, World Curling Champion in, 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 po- in Calgary, um, we already have the experience because we already played. Okay. And on the same uh, like ice rink for uh, killing. And uh, uh, 
uh, it was like uh, kind you can say kind of easy I know it's a new things for us but uh, we got used to it while we are playing and do the exercise and training um, here sometimes like for fun and we got we went to Prague before uh, all that is helping for our experience and and made us to get the uh, sick and actually the fourth, by the way the fourth it was so close but you know the games always sometimes comes uh, down to the smallest need things, some, like, smallest yeah. details. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you need some like sometimes to to reach like uh, the first or the second. It's not always. Uh, for you, Alistair, uh, coming for number uh, six on the Saudi team, what's your uh, comment regarding that? How do you guys feel? I thought the guys the guys did fantastically well. <coughs> um, the putting it in context. Um, as a Saudi team, they had never won a match before playing at this level, and we won. We, we played in a competition where there were eight teams in total, so we had seven matches, and we beat two of the other international teams. So this was our very first wins at international level, and it was a huge achievement for um, guys who have been playing for such a short time in the, in a country where winter sports is not. The, the natural thing to do. So um, beating two foreign international teams was absolutely amazing and we were just so happy to be there and it was a very proud moment for me and I guess for the guys as well to uh, wear a, a shirt representing Saudi Arabia and, and winning at, at sport. It's, it's, it's a great feeling. I was really, really proud of the guys. They played so well and put a lot of effort in and the training paid off and um, they they just worked hard and they worked all the way through the game always just kept ahead of the opposition and won, won the games in the end sure we were playing against other countries where their, their skill levels and their experience was far far higher than ours and um, to be honest we were very unlikely to beat them but miracles can happen in sport I mean just look at the football last week Saudi beating Argentina we were playing against some teams which were the equivalent of Argentina in our sport but on this occasion we didn't manage to beat them but with support from the Winter Sports Federation if we get good ice here in the future in Riyadh if we get more people coming along who are committed and enthusiastic for the sport one day we could be up there competing really hard against these top teams so you mentioned Division 2030 in the in the in the discussion. One of the objectives in that is to in, in, in to have sport for all, for the health and for the benefits of people. And curling is the absolute ideal sport for that because it's indoors, it's cool, it's fun, it's a team sport, it's a good workout both physically and mentally, and it's the ideal game for a hot country like Saudi Arabia. But these guys here playing for Saudi Arabia in Canada last month. They did really, really well, and my congratulations to them. Indeed, you know, uh, it was a team effort, and uh, to be honest, uh, we're very proud to actually have a recognition. It was not uh, easy. Uh, we know that we don't have ice in our backyard yet. It's coming. Okay? Well, we don't have it yet, and we don't have access to what they do. They have actual winter, winter, ice winter. They have arenas there, like literally uh, can be across the street from their houses and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, in different uh, high schools and uh, community centers and everything. So we, I feel like we did very well compared to the resources we have and the experience that we have. So I think we did amazing, you know. Uh, for you, Alistair, like... Uh, I'm sure many young Saudis, they're looking at that, like curling should be something. What advice do you have to individuals that are, they may be interested, they're not sure, how will you, what would you like to say to the young generation? Because it is a young nation we have here in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. What I would say to them is, because we need ice to compete on, we, we need the facilities, first of all, before we can really practice the sport and take more people in. Where we have the ice in the Royal Mall, it is very small. It can only take so many, a, a small number of people at a time. And we're very, we're limited in bringing young people or bringing any more people into the sport. We're not quite at capacity at the moment, but 
we, we can't take a lot of people in. What we need is facilities. What we need is each of the cities in the kingdom to look at the sports facilities and invest not only in football pitches, basketball pitches, all these things, but invest in ice rinks for curling as well as skating and ice hockey and, and the other ice sports and to look forward and put in dedicated curling sheets of ice in the, in the cities. And when that's in place, then is a time that we will look to have mass participation and bringing young people in from schools and colleges, universities, <coughs> etc., in to, to, to play properly. So the key to it is having facilities in, in, the, in the country. In Riyadh, we do have ice in, in the city at the uh, Riyadh Boulevard, but it's ice which is used for show purposes, for um, skating shows, dancing on ice, yeah. this sort of thing as part of the Riyadh season. We would love to get access to that ice there because it's much better, it's much bigger than what we have in the Royal Mall. And we need access to ice so that we can get more people into the sport and so that we can really push the sport forward as well. Indeed. What we would also really like is support so we can get an international level coach to come into the country to help bring people forward and be dedicated for teaching them about curling and then improving them and um, making sure that they grow with the sport and enjoy it but learn and then become really good athletes in the sport for the future. So we've got a whole list of items which we would love to see and we're working with the Saudi Winter Sports Federation to try and get more facilities and then obviously the people to go with it to, to promote the sport. Indeed, you know, it's a, it's a community effort and you have to do what you love and it seems like you're very passionate of it and I can see you're sharing that passion here with the young generation, with the young uh, population, eager individuals who they kind of want to be part of the ICE community. So yeah, uh, for you, Mohammed, uh, it's something that I felt like, uh, did you ever expect you were going to be like a member of the team to go into compete international? Because if you think about it, it's like no one really expected to have curling here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't thinking about it at all. But what sparked uh, the idea? That's a question. We were sitting, all of us, as a friend, and they, like it's become like a su suggestion from Zane. So Zane introduced you? Yes. Yeah. So he's the person you, you want to turn around and thank? Of course. So thank you, Zane. Well, you're welcome. So it seems like... Uh, I don't want to say about Alistair. I see him, he's the godfather of the kill, Saudi killing. Does he have the cat with him he on the ice? Saudi, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so only a few the, 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 I yeah. feel like our generation understood yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, I understand yeah. the reference. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Uh, so it's very interesting, you know, the idea of it, you know, because uh, curling is... I w for me, when you guys told me like curling and this and that, and then you guys told me you guys won competition and everything like that, I was surprised because uh, as a team, this is your first official interview. Is it not? Yes. Yes, it exactly. is. So yes, it is. I feel like it's a great honor, especially after coming back. That's what I want to tell you. you Go get ahead. The honor <laughs> for the first interview for our Saudi national team. My God, you should guys give me like honorary, like. Uh, yeah, well, sure. We can give you a, a bin. Uh, it's not, not on the ISO. I don't want to. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. We can so give you can. one of the gifts. You know, we normally distribute to the players internationally. Oh no, I can't. Oh no. No, no, no. It's a gift. No, no, it's a gift. It's a you gift. No one is going to give it to you. No, so it's not a big Nothing deal. Nothing with ice. You don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to play. No, but it's it's. Uh, well, it would be an honor to have you there. It's very interesting, you know. Like you guys came number six, the first interview after winning international. Yeah, and it's not easy, as uh, Alistair said. Uh, we're competing with a lot of individuals been doing this since their young age. Yes, you know they lived on the ice. I feel like they were able to crawl, play on the ice, then they're able to walk. If I'm not mistaken, in Canada, you guys won in Canada. Yeah, you know yeah. uh, their national uh, sports, the hockey. Yeah, yeah, and by the way, th all, most of the teams, like you can say, uh, yeah, most of them, they are living in Canada and America, so they are playing the, the game like um, from a young age. On, yeah. on, um, uh, uh, it's daily. No, I'm not gonna say in daily, like in weekly basis. So uh, they ex it's easy for them. Here we don't have even the ice rank for the Kelly. 
So, so when was we the, brought that we get the when was the uh, the ice rink ever when was it uh, established or open opened here? Uh, I heard it's gonna be like uh, one of the Al Gidia project soon. So when they finish, it's gonna be there's one ice rink there. And the one that you guys play at when when did uh, it open? It's at the mall. And it's only uh, mall since it was open. Mall. Yes, it's skating mall. Really? It's been there for yeah. forever. I don't think any. Uh, for me, it's like I was surprised when they say there's an ice rink here. Oh yeah, there are. There are. Yeah, there, there are like uh, two maybe or three. Remember or one like of the that. oldest uh, ice rinks here. It's uh, it was at Fal. Fal. Uh, Fal Center. Fal Center. Okay. And that was since the 80s. I'm not that old, but I remember there was this fall. Uh, fall combat uh, fall center uh, ice rink and it's been there for ages. I even can remember that. Yeah. So wow. Okay, it's nice too. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. I don't know how to say. You know, I I feel like I have more questions with every answer you guys given me. You know, it, it, is training easy to le- for uh, to do what you guys do? Like, what's the I w- what's the difficulty level? I will tell you. Uh, you see, uh, M- Muhammad example. He's playing with us on the ice for about a year now, but oh, like uh, there's a but there. Yeah, but but yeah. but I'm telling you, to uh, when he went to the camp, which was a week, I can see the improvement for him from um, a club level curling to international athlete. And yes, you can wow. call him his. So now you're an athlete. Uh, yeah, he's an international athlete, you basically. Yes, you so can say that. We need your autograph. Officially. Why not? Why not? There we go. My honor. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. And for you, Alistair, like, how would you describe the difficulty for a young uh, kids in elementary, middle school, or even high school that want to join it? What expectation of challenges do you expect? Well, it's like any sport. You, there's an entry level into it. <coughs> and typically, if somebody new comes along to our curling, we, we give them an induction, which is a few minutes explaining what the sport is all about. And then we take them on the ice and just small steps on the ice to get used to the balance and the moving around and working with a brush. And then we give them the curling stone to work out how to push it and to deliver the stone. So we, we take them on and show them the very first steps of the, of the sport. Um, and it's like any other sport. The more effort you put in, the more time you put in, the better you become and all the rest of it. And after 10 minutes, 20 minutes on the ice, you, you can pick the sport up. You get the hang of it. You you play a couple of ends and um, you understand what the sport is. But to be good at it, you need to put the practice in. You need to be dedicated like any sport. You have to practice. You have to improve your skill. You have to learn from, from experts uh, and all these things. So anybody can start the sport. Um, but if they want to improve themselves, they've got to put the effort in as well. And what we need, as I mentioned earlier, what we need in the kingdom is more facilities where people can practice regularly. We we practice every two weeks on ice, which is very poor quality, and it's only half the size that we need at the Royal Mall. And that allows us to do some of the really basic stuff. So we have to go abroad just now yeah. to, pra- to practice at anything at all. And Zane described the camp that we, we have set up for Saudi curlers each year in, in Prague. Um, and to go along to that and develop yourselves, at the moment, that's what we would be mm-hmm. doing. So anybody who's wanting to come along, we would say to them, Here, here's basic curling Give in Riyadh. And, you, uh, you've you've tried it, yeah. but to develop it, you need to go and find ice. Come with us over to Prague. Um, spend a week with proper coaches and Indeed. high quality teams time there and in time when we've got ice in Riyadh and Jeddah and other cities in the kingdom we'll be able to do that here but until that day we need to bring people on the small steps and just let, let them grow but they need to be passionate, they need to put effort in as well everything in sport you don't get for free you only get reward out of sport once you've done a lot of training, done a lot of practice, put a lot of effort in. Indeed, you know, how much effort, how much uh, passion you put into it. But uh, there's an w- uh, interesting question, uh, Alistair, if you don't mind. Uh, Saudi Arabia, a lot of them, they don't know how to ice skate. You know, this is one thing I feel like is very crucial because you are, you are literally skating on the ice. Uh, we're, right, te- technically we're not skating because skating 
uses skates, as, as you know. We use flat shoes, one with a uh, grippy sole, like, yeah. a rubber t- like a rubber tire almost, oh. for, for, for gripping the ice. And we, and we have another shoe which has a very slidey s- sole, which allows you to slide across the ice. So we don't use skates. So normal shoes, you, you come along, wear them, and we will give you the, the equipment that you need for getting started. Okay, um, these these guys all have proper curling shoes um, because they're committed to the sport and they've invested their own money to to buy curling shoes. Beginners coming along, we'll give them beginners equipment to get them started. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so that kind of uh, elevated. Uh, so that kind of pretty much uh, put a lot of doubt uh, to rest because I I thought myself you needed uh, uh, to know how to skate and ice skate on the ice. So yeah, okay, makes sense now. Uh, well, definitely thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Alistair. Any final words or message you would like to say before we conclude uh, today's uh, discussion? Um, the only thing I'd like to say is you're very welcome to come along to one of our practices on a Saturday morning, and um, Zane will give you all the details about it, and you can be our guest, and um, we would be very delighted to welcome you along to understand and actually try the sport for yourselves. One thing talking about it is quite another thing playing it and enjoying it. Indeed, I totally agree with that. Sounds like a date for Saturday mornings. Yep. Indeed. Definitely thank you so much, Mr. Alistair. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh, for you, Mr. Zane, any final words or message you would like to say? Come and play. And as we say in uh, curling, good luck and good curling. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like a bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mohammed? Well, uh, hopefully, uh, like we made the uh, Saudi curling team now, and we we get the sixth on on the world champion. Hopefully, we're gonna get like better than that, and I'm sure, surely, we're gonna ha- have um, also a hockey team soon. You're gonna have Why a hockey not? team. You don't know, yeah. yeah that is. If that is, I'm gonna try to be the goalkeeper. Yeah. You you would love to play hockey. Uh, I would love the idea of playing hockey. It's not that I'm good at hockey. I can arrange for that. If you'd like well, to, I will help you to get some skating on the ice first. Okay. Because you scared from the ice. I won't say I'm scared of the ice. I'm just like not like. Uh, You're gonna like it. Hopefully, I like the cold weather. Yeah. So why not ice ice baby? You're gonna have a said. lot of fun there. So yeah, why not? Cold is good. Cold is good. Yeah. Well, winter's coming. You know. Yeah. Winter's, winter's <laughs> coming. <laughs> <laughs> Winter is coming soon to Trujillo in 2029 for the uh, the uh, international the uh, Asian. Olympics mm-hmm. and uh, we need um, when I always say that we need to um, yeah we need as uh, Saudi Arabia or the Ministry of Sports we need to start prevailing for that from now because mm-hmm. we have only s- we have only seven years yeah and these seven years uh, we need to have 30 teams 50 in, in 15 games and about 150 players, or probably more, to to establish to it. establish th- uh, to 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 uh, c- to compete on one on uh, 109 medals in wow. Trujena. So we need to start from now. We we don't really have time actually. Okay, time is against yeah. us. Yes, it yeah. is. So yeah, well there you go, ladies and gentlemen. For the ones that love uh, ice, they're skating, they live the, and travel around the world. You love the ice, ice baby uh, theory, and you're not scared of that. You're not afraid of that. So yeah, there you go. This is your opportunity, and uh, as they say, Saudi Arabia is building it. If you build them, they will come. Yes. And there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for for the show on the mic with your host Sulaiman Zahifi. We'd like to welcome. We'd like to uh, uh, thank so much, uh, Mr. Alistair, Alistair Five, for joining us today. Thank you so much. We are uh, uh, truly a uh, pleasure and uh, great honor. Thank you so much. And of course, we have here in the studio, Mr. Zain Hagawi. Uh, the president and the founder of the uh, uh, Kingdom Curling Association, the Saudi Kingdom Curling Association. Yes, that is something new to kind of say it after. Yes, yes. so yeah, so we're very excited and very uh, honored to have you, and especially the first interview after your amazing win in Canada. Thank you, and of course, Mr. Mohammed Adaran. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Uh, I'm it's not sure. Yeah, well, you guys made us very proud to come number six. You, you know, it's not uh, really talked about on the social media or anything, but I'm very happy to have you as the first interview. You can go to the whoops, uh, the World Curling Federation and see our pictures 
uh, it's posted there already. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is an amazing team, the Saudi team uh, with Saudi members and Mr. Alist Alistair uh, Fife all the way from Scotland. So, yeah, we're very honored and very happy, and we're very proud of you guys. Hopefully you guys can make us proud Thank you. and come with uh, first, yeah. second, or even third. I feel like just having the presence there as a Saudi team. Well, our target to be, to be the first. So of course. Yes. Yeah, why not? Indeed, go for it. You know, the sky is the limit, as uh, the crown prince said. Yes. He said, uh, go for it. You know, don't, don't be shy. Have uh, confidence in yourself. Saudi people have confidence in yourself, the uh, Saudi organization. So, yes. Absolutely. You know, with uh, Curling Ice and Royal Mall, from oh. Royal Mall to international competition and compete and win. Yeah. And win. Uh, that is actually telling you how much we can do in the future when we have a real ice, a real um, equipment. Uh, s equipment and everything that support would everything. really and support. We can do more. We can actually compete internationally in the A division. There you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there you have it. You know, that the, uh, our amazing champions coming number six mm. in Canada and making us very proud. Uh, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's all for today for On The Mic with your host, Suleiman al -Zahifi. Till further episodes and more discussions with amazing guests all over the uh, all over the world coming to the King of Arabia. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. On The Mic. On the mic with your host, Suleiman Azahafi.